Oh, hello there. Welcome to RHS Quick Tech, brought to you by Robertson Heating Supply. Today, we're taking a look at Rain's new RD17 Universal Heat Pump, and we'll be covering basic installation. That would be piping, wiring, and charging. Basically, everything you need to know to get started. My name is James. Let's begin. As you can see, the new RD17 is a side discharge heat pump. While it might look very similar to other mini split outdoors, they don't share a lot of commonalities, especially with how it interacts with the indoor unit. However, it does have some considerations for mounting. For mounting. It does have some considerations for mounting. As you can see, in our uh, lab install here, we have them mounted on blocks. Direct mounting to the pad is possible, however, not recommended as it is a heat pump. Here we can see the outdoor liquid and suction port connections. As you can see, we have a uninsulated liquid line as well as an insulated suction line, just like a normal heat pump. This does use liquid line filter dryers, as you can see here. Again, much very similar to standard unitary equipment. Above them here is the common suction port with a handy integrated valve core removal tool. Your, server, your service ports are accessed through here for your king valves. And here are your hose connections. Above that, here, we have the electrical connections for both the high voltage and low voltage. When you first open the panel of the RD17, you're gonna see this, the Econet control board. It controls everything else in the outdoor unit. And for install, as you can see here, it has our low voltage connections. However, from this terminal block, which you're probably used to seeing on our other products, it's fed down into here, which is another terminal block on this helpful DIN rail. From left to right, I'm gonna cover some of the connections. Here is our ground wire, L1 and L2, which is just line voltage. Here you can see an H1 and H2 which are just jumpered over to L1 and L2 and can feed accessories such as the base pan heater or crankcase heater. On the low voltage side, we have E1 and E2, which is our Econet connections. We only have a C, no R, Y, and Y2, B, which is our reversing valve wire, and much like our other heat pump products, is energized during the heating cycle. And finally, W, which feeds back voltage in 24 volts to the first stage heating for defrost mode. Here I'll show you some example wiring schemes based on what you are trying to achieve. So for wiring, specifically for Econet, if you're using a fully communicating system, so Econet thermostat, the communicating indoor unit, as well as the RD17, wiring could not be simpler. From the thermostat to the indoor unit, we're going to connect R to R, C to C, E1 to E1, and E2 to E2. However, going from the indoor unit 
to the RD17, we want E1 to E1 and E2 to E2. Two wires only. We do not want to connect R and we do not want to connect C. The RD17 has its own internal transformer, so it does not require power from the indoor unit. If you make these connections, the low voltage fuse will blow. If you are hooking up the RD17 with 24 volt legacy thermostats and you want to use the inverter mode or smart mode, here's how you'll want to wire the controls. From your 24 volt thermostat, you should be connecting R to R to the indoor unit, common to common to the indoor, Y1. Don't hook up Y2 and hook up B to B for the reversing valve. From the indoor unit to the RD17, we do not want to hook up R and we do not want to hook up C. Again, we only connect Y1 to Y1, B to B, and on the outdoor unit, we have a U1 and U2, which controls if it's using the inverter mode or not. And with this jumper installed, it will operate in the smart modulating mode. Alternatively, we can set this up as a two-stage unit, which we'll cover. Here, for two-stage mode, again, we will require a 24-volt thermostat, two-stage, and again, we'll want to hook up R to R, C to C, again, from the thermostat to the indoor unit, Y1 to Y2, or sorry, Y1 to Y1, Y2 to Y2, and B to B for the reversing valve. From the indoor unit to the RD17, we'll want to hook up R to R, nope, oh. So from the indoor unit to the RD17, we don't want to hook up R and we do not want to hook up C. We will, however, hook up Y1 to Y1, Y2 to Y2, and B to B. Here, between U1 and U2 in the smart mode, we would, not, we would, uh, we would want to install a jumper However, in this case, we will not install the jumper between U1 and U2. Previously, I described the U1 and U2 terminals. And for charging, especially with 24 volt connections, it's very important. U1 and U2 are located here, one and two. And when a jumper is installed, the unit will operate in inverter mode. If you're planning on operating the system as such during charging, you'll actually need to remove the U1 and U2 jumper. That way, when we give it a Y2 call here, it will energize at high speed. Make sure the indoor blower is operating at full speed as well. Charging is then done normally via subcooling. If you're already going to be using the two-stage thermostat setup, then you'll just give a call for Y2 and charge normally as you would any two-stage unit. You can also use the Ream Contractor app via Bluetooth to connect to the board here and tell it manually to turn on into charging mode. If you're using an Econet thermostat, 
you can go menu, service, outdoor unit checkout, and initiate a cool charge mode from there. But these are not critically charged systems, much like mini splits are. So you can weigh in your gross charge and trim charge by subcooling, as you would with any other normal unitary system. As long as we're operating in charging mode via Econet or in high speed via the 24 volt connections. Thank you for watching my video. Hopefully that helped you understand the very basics of installing the RD17 universal heat pump. If you had additional questions, please feel free to call me personally or anyone else at the engineering department at 330-821-9180 and we're more than happy to help. My name is James. Have a good day.